Hey guys and welcome to this video. So in this video I'm going to be trying on a bunch of products from a bunch of different brands like JCAP Beauty, LA Girl, and a couple of new brands at least to me. Shophush.com sent me a bunch of different products. They are basically an online e-commerce site that sells affordable makeup. I think their slogan is like diva on a dime so I was like that's awesome I am a diva on a dime so when they asked if they could send me some products I was like sure why not as long as you know I am brutally honest on my channel so as always there were some definite misses in this haul as well as some hits so if you want to see how I got this look and what I thought about all of the products then just keep watching all right so I'm gonna start out with this foundation this is the LA girl pro coverage foundation I haven't tried this yet because it's an illuminating foundation and I have oily skin but I have heard really good things so I want to see if it works for my skin type and I'm going to be applying it on one side of my face with my favorite wonderful L'Oreal sponge and on the other side of my face I'm going to be testing out this little silicone sponge. I have to tell you guys I am super skeptical about this sponge going into it but I like the concept. You're basically supposed to be able to use this like a beauty blender but it's supposed to be more sanitary because nothing actually gets inside of there and you could just clean off the surface so it's supposed to be a more sanitary version of a sponge applicator. I like that idea but I don't know it already feels kind of weird. I've got the order form in front of me here So I'm gonna be letting you know prices as we go This foundation was eight dollars on the website and I got mine in the shade fair Okay, so I'm gonna apply this with the L'Oreal sponge first just so that I can see how it applies with a normal sponge before we test out the silicone sponge. This has a pump which is awesome. It definitely has a scent Okay, so this is the side I'm going to use the sponge. Okay, so it applied really beautifully with this sponge. Definitely like a medium coverage, very luminous looking. I'm definitely going to have to set this. Okay, so let's see how it goes with this silly sponge. I've seen people apply it and you're supposed to kind of slide it onto your face a little bit, not press as much. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, you see how on this side of my face you can't see texture very well at all? Look at this side of my face. All you can see is texture. I'm sorry you guys, I'm abandoning this. Oh, so much better. But this foundation looks really, really pretty. It's a little tiny bit light, if you can see, kind of compared to my shoulders once I applied it. But I think we can fix that with a bronzer. Okay, since I don't have a concealer or powder to try out, I went ahead and applied the Maybelline Better Skin and Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. But now I'm going to test out this bronzer. This is the J Cat Beauty Golden Soleil Baked Bronzer. This is in the shade Bora Bora Beach, and it was $6.00. So it looks like it's got a bit of a golden shimmer running through it. This is what it looks like in the pan. Just gonna swirl my brush in. I'm gonna use this Real Techniques blush brush. The shimmer isn't really noticeable on my face, which is nice. I feel like it's a nice mid-tone brown that's just warming up the face. Okay, and then next up, I've got three highlighters from JCAT Beauty. They're You Glow Girl Baked Highlighters in the shade Moonlight, which is like this golden shade. Crystal Sand, which looks like a really intense kind of white shade. And then we've got Bella Rose, which is like a rosy, icy rosy color. So I'm gonna swatch each of these and decide which one I wanna use. These were $8 a piece, and they each have like a different imprint in them which is pretty cool. So this is the first one. This is Moonlight right here. That's Moonlight. It's nice but I'm not like obsessed. And then we've got Crystal Sand. That one's a little bit more intense. And then last but not least we've got Bella Rose which has got like this really pretty rose imprint on there. And that's Bella Rose. So I like these last two the best. This one's a little bit deeper than I typically go for, and it's the least pigmented of the three. I'm gonna go with this middle one just because I think it'll complement this bronzer we've got going on nicely. And a lot of you guys have been asking what my favorite highlighting brush is, and it's this e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush. Although after y'all's recommendation, I'm definitely going to go pick up that Eco Tools Fan Brush. Okay, so I just swirled my brush in. I'm gonna apply to the tops of my cheeks. Definitely very very pigmented. That's an intense highlight right there I just got some in my eyebrows and now they're like shimmery. Okay, and then next up I've got this eyeshadow palette. It's called butterfly eyeshadow palette This is six dollars and I just really liked the colors when I was looking at it online It just looked like my kind of eyeshadow colors So there's eight matte shades and seven shimmer shades So you've got a good combination of shimmer and matte and like a million transition colors You've got a white matte a black matte. I just feel like the colors in here are so usable. I'm excited to see if the pigmentation is there. So I'm going to start out with this shade right here called Peach Cream and use that through my crease on my Wet n Wild crease brush. 
Who's surprised? It's really not bad considering I don't have an eyeshadow primer on, but let's test out another shade. I'm gonna use this shade right here, which is called Warm Soil, on my outer corners. And this is just a brush I got in a set of BH Cosmetic, whoop, BH Cosmetic brushes. Okay, not loving that, so I'm gonna switch brushes because I'm not crazy about that brush and make sure that it's not the brush's fault. I mean, it's pigmented, but it's going on a little bit muddy, a little bit patchy. I'm having to work harder to blend it than I normally have to. Yeah, that dark shade was not very blendable. Let's try out one of these shimmer shades. I'm gonna use this lightest one right here, which is called Magic Touch. And I'm gonna use that on my e.l.f. eyeshadow brush. Whoa, that's pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay, so just from the sample size of those three shades, the lighter transition color was pretty good. The darker color wasn't crazy about. Shimmer though is super impressive. I'm gonna take that dark brown shade underneath my lash line and go back over everything with my blending brush. Okay, next up we've got this Fine Line Liquid Liner. This was $5 and it's by LA Girl. The tip on this is really small. It looks like an actual pen. If you compare this to like the Essence one I just reviewed, this is much, much shorter. So I don't know if that's gonna make it easier or harder to work with, but we shall see. Okay, definitely much harder. Okay, next up we have this mascara by LA Girl. A lot of you guys were requesting that I do an LA Girl haul, so this is kind of a mini one because there are a lot of LA Girl products, so hopefully this is helpful. But this is the LA Girl Lash Fiber 3D Dimensional Mascara. I haven't really seen much about this, so let's test it out. Okay, so this wand is interesting. It kind of reminds me of that Essence Volume Wand, but it looks like there's sparse areas and then bristled areas, so I think you're supposed to rotate this type of brush. Yeah, definitely not overly impressed with this. It's kind of applying like my mascaras do when they're almost out. It just doesn't seem like it's wanting to apply a ton of product. Okay, next up, I'm really excited about these. We've got these Madly Matte Lip Glosses. These are $1. I got three shades. This like brownish color is the shade Mink. This orangey color is the shade Hippie. And then this kind of lavender color is the shade Majesty. I think I'm gonna try out this color, the shade Mink. Just because last time we did a dark lip, it was an epic fail, so I kind of want to make up for it. If you guys haven't seen my NYX Cosmetics haul, the lip product I used was dark, and it was not a good lip product, <laughs> at least for a dark lip color, so let's give this another shot. Really strong scent. I'm gonna try and think of what it smells like. I think this is a really, really cool color. I really, really like the finish of it. It's very matte. I'm interested to see how drying it's going to be, but the smell is kind of getting to me. Like, it's a strong scent, and I had to kind of take my time applying this because it is such a dark shade, and I'm feeling like a little bit lightheaded. It's like when you smell hairspray for a while. I think it's because I had the applicator like underneath my nose for a few minutes while I was trying to apply it, but I'll be interested to see if that scent lasts or if it fades. I'm probably going to apply some lashes on this look because my lashes are not doing much for me right now with this mascara and I'm about to film another video. So that was all the products I wanted to try so I'm gonna wear these for a few more hours and then check back in and give you my final thoughts on everything. Hey guys, I'm back. It's been several hours and I wanted to give you guys an update on all the products and my final thoughts. So let's start with this LA Girl Pro Coverage Foundation. So I am oily. It's so hard to see where like my highlighter ends and my oiliness begins. Like right here I've got highlighter on on. Right here it looks like I have highlighter on, but that's just oil. I'm not surprised. I mean, it is a luminous foundation. That said, my pores are starting to look a little bit more pronounced, especially kind of in this area where I have larger pores. It's starting to kind of sink in there, but it's not breaking up anywhere. I don't have anywhere on my face where the foundation has completely broken down or started to break up on my skin, which is good. I love the packaging and that it has a pump and comes in a lot of different shades. To me, this looks like a really high-end foundation for a really affordable price so I'm overall pretty impressed by this foundation and I do think it lived up to the hype okay next up we have this silicone sponge I just don't like it I think it's weird it felt weird but most importantly it made my pores look really really bad it made my skin texture stand out what I love about the sponge is that it really pushes the product into your skin and I felt like this was just kind of gliding it onto my skin maybe I used it wrong maybe I needed to blend it in for longer but if that's the case, I'm gonna go with the sponge 
anyway because with the sponge the first application looked good and I didn't have to do anything special to make it look better. So overall I'm a pass on this. I think it's a cool concept but just not for me. Okay and then next up we've got this J-Cat Beauty Golden Soleil Baked Bronzer in the shade 102 Bora Bora Beach. I liked this. I mean I didn't fall in love with it. It's a bronzer but it wasn't super shimmery which I appreciate and I felt like the color was a good brown. It wasn't too warm, wasn't too cool. It was a good shade for a all over bronze. It's not going to make you look like you just got a bad spray tan or be too ashy to where you can only use it as a contour shade. So I think the color of this is really nice. The price is good and I don't have anything bad to say about it but like I said I'm not obsessed with it. These on the other hand, these JCAT Beauty You Glow Girl highlighters, I am quite impressed by. I mean it's still casting rays from my cheekbone right now after all this time and I'm really really impressed specifically by these two shades. The Bella Rose which is like that icy pink and and Crystal Sand, which is the one I'm wearing right now. At first, I wasn't sure when I was swatching them because they feel a little bit powdery. They don't feel like a really high-end highlighter. Like the Flower Beauty highlight feels almost like a cream. It's buttery. There's absolutely no fallout on the face, in the pan whatsoever. These do give you a little bit of fallout, but oh my gosh, are they pigmented. So I am really, really impressed by these highlighters, and they're baked highlighters that you don't have to scrape anything off of. So that earns points in my book. Okay, next up we've got this Beauty Creations Butterfly Palette and like I said the shades in this palette are really beautiful. They're totally up my alley. Very neutral. A good mix of shimmer and matte shades. I feel like the shimmer shades in here are super pigmented. Really impressive. The transition shades are nice. They're usable. Not the most pigmented in the world but they're nice and I think you can make a really pretty eyeshadow look with them. The darker shades in here though I think leave something to be desired. They're not very blendable, not super pigmented, just overall hard to work with. But I think this palette was six or eight dollars so for that price and the amount of usable colors in here I think it's impressive. This on the other hand, this LA Girl Long Lasting Fine Tip Liquid Eyeliner, I'm just not a fan of the shape of this. The tip on here is way too small. You would think that would make it easier to work with because you have more precision but it actually makes it more difficult because you really have to maneuver your hand instead of letting the tip do the work for you. It's very stiff, so it doesn't really mold to the shape of your eye. So if you're looking for a fine tip eyeliner, I would recommend the Essence Super Fine Liner over this one. And then this LA Girl Lash Fiber Dimensional Mascara, I think this was my second to least favorite behind this silicone sponge. I just felt like this did nothing for my lashes. I layered it on a good three layers and they were still just stick straight. Like I said, it kind of seemed like a mascara that had already run out. So I don't know if I got a bad batch or if this is just how this mascara performs, but I am not impressed. And then lastly, we've got these Clean Color Madly Matte Lip Glosses. These are $1 liquid lipsticks. And as you guys can see, this lipstick lasted on my lips all day long. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to tell just by looking at it but it feels super super sticky like it never fully dried on my lips all day long I think you could mitigate that with like a translucent powder layering that on top of it but on its own it never fully set and it feels really tacky the smell of this really got to me because you have to take your time putting on a really dark color and having that strong scent below my nose for that long really felt like I was sniffing a marker for like five minutes and it made me honestly feel a little bit lightheaded but as the day went on I couldn't notice it at all it was just really a matter of while I was putting it on and immediately after when it was drying so while I think these do have some things to be desired they are one dollar so if you're looking for a one dollar pigmented long-lasting liquid lipstick that you could probably work with if you can get past the smell I think this is a really good option. So that is going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you have not already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.